Lynn confirmed she's coming? Yes, uh, I have. Again. Okay, I just have to get my. <coughs> Good afternoon. Are we on? Is there a mic running out there? Are we on? Yeah, it's on. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone, welcome everyone here today and our viewing audience to the June 13, 2019 uh, City of Davenport Zoning Board of Adjustment. Your, or your participation in city government is appreciated and welcome. If you have a pager or a cell phone, if you'd please turn it off now. Even if it's in silent mode, it may interfere with the room's electronics. My name is Kathleen Hart. I'm chairman of this uh, committee, and the members present today are to my immediate left, Jim Reistroffer. To my immediate right is Judith Lee. Um, we are anticipating the arrival of a fourth member, um, but uh, given the time, we're going to begin without her. And I'll explain something about that later. Let me go on with an introduction. Um, absent from today's meeting is Carrie Strayhall. Staff present are Scott Copes and Mallory Hoyt from Legal. The Zoning Board of Adjustment is a five-member judicatory board established by state law. We're appointed by the mayor and confirmed by city council to serve without compensation for a five-year term. We normally meet twice each month to hear appeals involving hardships from strict application of current zoning laws. We may also grant variances and rule on a variety of discretionary permits. Um, we have minutes from the May 23rd, 2019 meeting that need to be approved. Would entertain a motion if there are no corrections. I move approve. Um, all in favor, aye. aye. Any opposed? Uh, the, the minutes are approved. Um, today's agenda, we have, we do have one issue of old business and if I can ask, we have this listed as old business, which I wouldn't typically take up first, but then it's also listed again as other business later in the agenda. What's the preference or the intent? Yes. Yeah, I'm not, we're not hearing you, but it is. Try again. Yeah, now it's on. So under old business, it probably could have been labeled tabled until um, July 25th, I believe was the date. Um, the the previous tabling request stated that it would remain tabled until uh, July. Um, and then we have it listed as other business because um, after, basically it's listed under uh, old business as a reference just to unit, so the board knows that it's still on the table, but we're not acting on it. Then we would have moved to new business, and then we would have moved to discussion um, or other business. Um, at other business, that is a time for the public to step forward and, and state any comments or questions that they may have. And the petitioner for 518 Brown was going to ask the board to uh, remove the item from the table because there has been some progress on the request. Um, because this has not been made public and people might want to speak on the issue, it would be, uh, it couldn't be heard today. I mean, I went up and talked to legal last week and that's what uh, the determination was. So 
if the board would so choose to listen to the um, anybody speaking under under business and to remove anything off of the table, it wouldn't be able to be heard until the next cycle, which is June 27. Thank you. Um, then we would have one issue of new business on today's agenda, and that's that of Michael Hamilton of 2022 Warren Street. Um, before we move forward with this, I would like to explain to you that there are only three members present today. And in order for any matter to pass by this board, it must pass by a majority of a five-member board, which means you must get three votes in your favor in order for your petition to be granted. We are anticipating the arrival of a third per a fourth person, um, but in the event that she doesn't arrive before we're finished with your business, um, all three of us will have had to have voted unanimously in support of your project in order for you to be able to proceed. Um, you are welcome to wait. We can set your item back on the agenda and deal with this other matter and see if she arrives so you have that fourth person. I will tell you, you also have the option of uh, waiting for a full cycle another to the same date, the 27th, I believe we said, um, and have uh, hopefully all five members present so that you would get the opinion of all five members, which hopefully increases your chances of getting all three of the votes that you need. Um, but if you proceed today and there is not, the three of us don't agree uh, to support that now, then that decision is final, okay? So you could just wait and we could take care of this other matter. And you could even think about what all that meant. Okay, we're gonna flip you on the agenda. Um, and Mr. Thomas, um, it is our understanding, well we have, actually this is a tabled issue of, um, I'll go through the, uh, the official title on this, it's request HV19-07 of Tom Thomas on behalf of Place of Refuge at 518 Brownship for a hardship variance to refrain from providing required off-street parking spaces. Proposed plans provide no off-street parking spaces for the 84-seat place of worship. The property is zoned R4C, Central Residential District, Section 17.10.040, Table 17.10-2 of the Davenport Municipal Code requires nine parking spaces for an 84-place of or an 84 seat place of worship that would be one space for every 10 seats um this was a matter that was brought up uh, at our last meeting uh, we requested that this be tabled so that the um, city staff could look into some um, ideas that were tossed around about possible solutions to the situation um, and this was to come back to us uh, today um, to uh, perhaps bring this back off of the table. And Mr. Thomas, um, as it would stand now, um, if you would like for us to get bring this back up for consideration, we would need you to make that request today and we would have to approve that. And then it has to go actually on to our next meeting in order for us to bring the business up because this being an official meeting, it has to be put on the day's agenda with the, the public notice. So. If you would like to go ahead and get this your, your business back on the agenda, um, I would just simply ask that you come up and ask us to to put your put your uh, put your meeting on the or put your notice on the agenda. So, so mm -hmm. Mr. Thomas, if you could please just again get, go ahead and give us your name and um, all we need to, from you is a request to put your uh, business item on the agenda for the next meeting. Okay. Um, good afternoon. I'm Pastor Tom Thomas with Place of Refuge Ministries. I'm asking that we put our re request back on the table for... With, with new information. With new information provided by the city that we've come up with a solution to our parking situation. Okay. And that would be back on the agenda. Um, Yeah. So please, if, if the board would please make the motion to remove the item from the table. Thank you. And place the item on the agenda for June 27th. Thank you for the guidance on the rules. Would to entertain that motion, please? I so move. And do we have a second to uh, 
to move this from the table to next cycle's agenda. Yeah. Jim seconds this. Is this a, a, a voice You can vote? do voice vote either way. All in favor, aye. aye. Any opposed? None. That will be on the next meeting's agenda then, Mr. Thomas. Um, that will be on the 27th at the same time. And um, we will be reviewing all of that updated information. Um, we have some uh, and anything else that might come up between now and then will be provided. And we will look forward to visiting with you then and hopefully finding resolution. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I apologize for the inconvenience on this because we, I know we thought we were coming here today to deal with this and uh, none of us is goods with Robert's rules of order and it was our error in not realizing that that would take another cycle beyond that. So I'm sorry for the inconvenience of having you um, down here under a, a misguided notion that we would be done with business today. But we will see you in a couple weeks. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, we do have the arrival of our fourth member then. Um, Lynn, welcome. Thank you. Um, so we will proceed with uh, the one item of new business on today's agenda, which is request HV19-08 of Michael Hamilton at 2022 Warren Street for a hardship variance to exceed the allowed detached garage size by 49% with a 40 foot by 64 foot, making that 2560 square feet uh, uh, garage. The property is zoned R4C Central Residential District. Section 17.09.030.A.6 allows for detached accessory garages equal to the foot point, footprint excuse me, of the dwelling in this district. The property has a dwelling of 1,720 square feet. And Scott, if you would please present for the city. Scott Copes, Community Planning. Um, so as you've stated, um, this petitioner wishes to demolish an existing garage and replace it with a larger garage. Uh, it happens to be on an adjacent lot, but the petitioner will be doing an agreement not to sever restrictive covenant to join the two lots together, so that's really not gonna be a problem. Um, the, uh, the new code allows for uh, detached garages up to the footprint or, you know, whatever the, however big the, the dwelling is on the face of the earth. It's not how tall it is or not how, how many square livable square feet is in the house but just based on the footprint of the house um, we base our information off the tax assessor's website and i had a diagram calculating that for you in the packet it differs slightly by maybe 60 square feet from what the petitioner had so it's really close compared to what they had um, so that's how our new code bases it our old code by the way we allowed at a maximum 1080 square feet for a detached garage so this petitioner by right is allowed to have a garage 1,720 square feet. So they're already allowed a fairly sizable garage by right without a hardship variance. Um, in staff's analysis, well, let me show you the photo here. Here's the photo off of the alley. Um, there's a slight rise to a level area. Um, so the area of the garage closest to the alley is going to be appear a little taller than what's going to be on the actual property. Um, to me, that doesn't really change anything. The other garages along the street are all kind of like that because of this hill there. Um, the petitioner says there's a unique circumstance here because of the slope. I don't see that. Um, I think it, there's the same other other properties have the same situation. Um, as you guys can see to the to the right that garage there's more wall exposed towards the alley than there is towards the you know further away from the alley and that's common with the other garages as well um, th so <clears throat> unique circumstance as far as physical circumstances like slope uh, the slope doesn't prohibit a garage um, a garage can be built here without um, a lot of added expense um, and the petitioner is actually proposing a garage that's quite large. Uh, it'd be cheaper to build a smaller garage. So there's nothing due to topography that's really limiting this garage. Um, here's the site plan. So the garage. Oh, 
on the northwest portion of the property would be removed at the same time this garage is built. So they would only have one garage at a time, or one detached garage at a time. Um, and you can see how much bigger this footprint is of this garage compared to the house. 49% um, bigger than what the code allows for. So here's the elevation. You know, as I said, as you get closer to the alley, there's, there's a little bit more of this garage exposed, but it really doesn't impact the structure overall that much. Um, there was one um, property owner who did submit a comment against the request. It was the property owner to the south, um, the property owner here. And um, so in doing our analysis, we looked at the strip application of a hardship ordinance. Um, there is no, the ordinance itself is what's causing the problem. It's a, con you know, it's a convenience to the petitioner to have a larger garage. It's not that the ordinance is causing a hardship. You can't have an ordinance cause a hardship. The slope of the land isn't causing a hardship. Um, it's just simply the desire of the petitioner to have a larger garage is what the issue is. Um, I've talked about the physical characteristics of the property a bit. Um, unique circumstance, this property isn't any different compared to other properties along this alley. Um, the houses in this uh, area are all pretty much the same size. Um, so this garage is going to be out of scale compared to other garages in the neighborhood. The old code only allowed for 1080. This is going to be 1700. Um, Potential essential character, yeah, the character is going to change. This is a huge garage. It's bigger than any of the houses out there. So the petitioner in staff's opinion has not met any of the four required uh, points of interest in our analysis. Staff recommends that the request be denied uh, on not meeting any of the requirements and be due to the impact on the character of the neighborhood. Scott, thank you. Any questions for Scott from staff? Or for staff from the board, thank you. Um, Scott, thanks very much. Uh, Mr. Hamilton, if you'd please come up, give us your name, <coughs> and um, explain to us your situation. Well, um, <clears throat> I was having a question, a variance. Um, of the code to uh, build a larger garage um, for a couple of reasons. One, the existing garage there um, is currently um, falling in. The can you switch that back, Scott, to the first? Um, it's just the arrow keys will do it. Arrow key. Yep, the left goes to the beginning okay. and the left to the right goes to the other way. If I could just like to just give you this. This is just an aerial shot of the two lots that are that I own that I just purchased. They have combined. And so basically this garage here is Sir, that's not about the important Mr. Hamilton. I'm sorry. Excuse me. If we could have you come back up to the mic and use the pointer because we would like to get your remarks on the record. Scott, thank you. So that garage right there, um, the ground behind it, having hydraulic pressure, is caving in the back of the garage. It's moved about a foot. So it bows like this. The garage currently in its state is unsafe and uninhabitable. Unless, of course, you want to file an insurance claim when it falls in on your vehicles. So that, first and foremost, is one of the reasons why I'm requesting a variance. And of course, Scott, sorry to the site plan. I have two lots together. Um, I bought this particular um, residence because I live right across the alley, currently at 2031. But the neighborhood is so fantastic and such good neighbors, I have an opportunity here to 
build a larger garage that will hold my vehicles, and I'm in a great neighborhood. I don't have to leave. I don't want to leave. And I want to enhance the neighborhood. I'm going to put up a building that, as Scott pointed out and showed you in that print drawn up by Townsend Engineering, will have beautiful vinyl siding. It will have the exact same roof asphalt shingles that I just put on the house that I had re-roofed. The only thing is it will be larger. And the reason it will be larger um, is that, first of all, I need a garage. I don't have one. I don't have a usable garage, but I have two lots. And I should be somewhere in the city code should allow me to, to build something on the lot. I'd rather not build one garage of 1,700 square feet on the empty lot and another one on my existing lot and have two of them to the, that would total the amount of 3,400 square feet and it would cost me twice the amount of money. I'd rather build one. What I would like to show you, if I may, is some pictures. There's a before picture from Warren Street and an after picture from Warren Street of exactly what this would look like when it's done. Um, if I could simply let you know if you put, want us to have those for our consideration, those would have to remain with the city file on that, this case so that's that we fine. can get those photographs back. I don't care. Wonderful. Thank you. I'd love to look at those. <clears throat> and as Scott so aptly pointed out, the rise is approximately six feet. So as you can see, that garage is built down into the ground. The garage I'm proposing would also be built down into the ground. So and I have another picture that I would like to show you. This is basically what you would be seeing. This is of the old garage, but the same garage would look the same height-wise because this thing's sitting in the ground. The only difference, of course, is it's going to be brand new, aesthetically pleasing to the entire neighborhood, more so than most of the garages in the neighborhood, and matching beautiful asphalt shingles to the house. I think it would enhance everybody's view. Could I ask, please, Mr. Hamilton, if you could clarify this before and after? You're wanting us to note what about those two? Like this is right now, looking from Warren Street. Mm -hmm. If when the garage is done and completed, that's exactly what you'll see. Oh, there will be no changes. What you're trying to illustrate. Yeah. Thank you. So, any negative effects on the neighborhood is nil because you can't see anything. And again, because this thing is so deep into the ground, you'll basically, that white picture shows, all you'll see is the peak of the garage and a little bit of, of the foundation, which is actually be more of a stick frame built. And obviously, um, there's another reason. I restore and, and collect classic cars. I have 12 of them. I can't get 12 of them in that two-car garage. Okay. Any other comments then or no. issues for us? I would like to show you these to show you that this is not a junkyard that's going to be. This is what I do for a passion, for a living. Are those for the file also? We can have those as well. Okay, thank you. And I don't know if uh, any of you have read these. Uh, I addressed each one of these um, requirements. And I don't know if you have seen these and read these. Yeah, that's part of the packet that we're Is provided, it? yes. Okay. And because 
I guess I would like to show you another picture. If uh, just up the street, not far from me, at 738 Spalding, there's a beautiful brick home, much like mine. Um, that gentleman happens to have a 30 by 50 garage, much bigger than the footprint of his home. So I would guess I'm asking for the same permission that other people in the city get, and especially when they're in my neighborhood. Did you have that photo? Yes, yes ma'am. And that's at what address? 738 Spalding. And you're at 20? 28 Warren. 2028 Warren. He's approximately two blocks down and halfway up the block. So I'm asking you, the board, to uh, approve my request for a variance based on simple neighborhood aesthetics and the fact that I have an empty lot that, as Scott pointed out, is a buildable lot. I'm allowed to build there. Well, why should I build there and build on my lot? Why build twice? Why have two when we can put it into one? It changes nothing in the neighborhood, aesthetic-wise, other than enhance it and make it nicer. Jim, did you have a question? Yeah, Mr. Hamilton, I'm noticing this picture at 730 38 Spalding mm -hmm. um, apparently they got the same brick as on the house is this a detached garage or is it attached to the house it's actually detached but they have created a breezeway between the two so they I don't know how you consider that Scott is that considered attached? A, a, a attached garage when there's a breezeway breezeway um, the courts have ruled over time that it, the breezeway doesn't officially attach it no And just through the GIS maps and logging on to those, you take the measurements, it's 30 by 50. It's a wonderful, beautiful eight car garage. You say oh. that's an eight car garage there. Oh yeah, it's all of that. Um, I did, uh, I don't know if this is proper procedure, but I did bring the right to sever that I have signed and filled out to show that I have no plans to separate in these two places. I want to live here until I pass away, and I want to restore the other cars that I have. And we wouldn't need that. That would be an issue for the city, I believe. But are we talking about not severing which properties? The, this and the empty lot? Tw yeah, the, 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 lo the, home, the property that is built on and the empty lot yeah. next to it. This lot right here is 2022. Correct. And this lot here with the garage and the house is 2028. 20, Correct. They're 47 and a half feet wide each lot by 177 feet long. I guess that shows it better. Um, is it, uh, Scott or Mallory, is it reasonable to presume that the garage could not even be built without that since they had intends to overlap onto the other property? The garage is not going over the common property line. So oh, they can build, not. right, the line goes right down the middle. I was, I was thinking that there was an overlap. And it would meet the setback requirements. The, uh, the thing is that, uh, that adjacent lot is buildable, um, but it has to have a house on it before you can have a garage unless you do the agreement not to sever. So it's a little bit of a misnomer to say the two properties together are allowed twice the garage size because you can't have that additional garage size without a house. The garages in residential neighborhoods are allowed only because they're customary ancillary uses to residential uses. You know, a 12-foot garage isn't a customary use in a residential area. It's, it's quite frankly, uh, bordering on commercial size of a building. Um, this hardship variance will run with the property um, when this current owner moves out, it will be a problem for anybody looking to buy it. They'll, they'll think they can put a, a business in there, which would be illegal in a residential area. Um, hardship variances are unique to each property. Um, the, if another property in the city has a hardship variance, it does not set a precedent for this property or any other properties. Thank you for clarifying that, Scott. 
Um, any any other questions from the board for Mr. Hamilton? All right. Any further final comments from you? Well, since I've never done this, I can't think of any right off the top of my head other than I've provided you with a wonderful picture of somebody else who got the permission from the city. And all I'm asking is that I be treated fairly and receive the same kind of consideration. We have the same identical situation. I don't see where I should be discriminated against just because I'm on Warren and I'm not on Spalding. I would like to build a beautiful, aesthetically pleasing garage that will house the vehicles that I have and keep them safe. I'm not asking any more than most homeowners that would like a garage, a garage big enough to house the things that they need as a homeowner. Lawnmowers too as well, not just my vehicles. Where am I gonna put my new lawnmower that I bought for 16,000 square feet? That's not a push mower job. So there's other, you know, that's what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for some serious consideration. I thought I explained it pretty well on the um, pamphlet that I had to fill out those issues. And I hope that you read it and take them in consideration. And Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Um, there would be an opportunity at this point for anybody in the audience to speak in favor or in opposition to this. There is nobody in today's audience. So that takes care of that matter. Um, at this point, I would entertain, uh, please feel free to rest your feet. Okay. Um, would entertain a motion at this time. I would like to make a motion to approve request HV 19-08 of Mr. Hamilton's uh, gar garage at 40 by 64, 25, 60 square feet. And is there a second, please? Second. All right. Um, we do have the opportunity for discussion now that there's a second. Um, I would just like to point out um, a, that there is a matter here of having to meet statutory requirements in order to grant this request. Um, we are oftentimes set with some cases where we are left with one that uh, might seem somewhat dubious. Um, none of these have been met in this case and um, just to remind the board that that is their statutory requirement also. I have a question for staff. Yeah. Um, can you think of a reason that the property on Spalding would have been granted that variance in the past? I realize it doesn't set precedence, but I'm trying to understand where it may have come from. Um, yeah, there there are various reasons that um, that hardship variance get approved. Um, they're and they're typically unique to that specific property. Um, it could be that there was uh, you know vandalism in the neighborhood and they needed a garage or you know, I don't really know because if this would have been provided, you know, in our packet, right. um, we could have reviewed this and given a little, little analysis of it. But in any case, uh, if you look at what the courts have said and what, uh, what we have to go by when it comes to a variance, each hardship variance is unique itself, and we don't look at other variances that have been approved because the variance is supposed to be unique to this property so if there's something unique at this property at 2022 Warren Street and if those issues warrant a variance then the board may grant a variance um, and so you know I, I, don't, I don't really know what there hasn't been too many well I, I shouldn't say that but um, so vandalism is one reason I think garages get approved you know sure. if people don't have a garage and they want a garage um, but in this case a garage of 1720 square feet can be built um, without a variance yeah. in some cases the uh, variances are, are issued for garages when a garage doesn't fit because it's in a side yard or a corner yard so Spalding I know 
that's a cur there's a curvilinear streets there, I believe, on Spalding, and it could be that this garage is in a uh, a setback requirement. Okay. So. That's helpful. Thank right. you, Scott. Uh, Jim. Yeah, I Scott, I I think you would go along with this that in the past we always look at the merits of the variance that we're talking about now, not something that was done five years ago, and. Uh, is that the way we got to look at this on the merits of this property? Well, that would be correct. And I get you bring up another good point is that when that other variance was brought up or approved, it was under a different code. So we have a new yeah. zoning code right now. Right. And so that's another difference that, that is, exists. Okay. Any other discussion here among the members before we move to the vote? All right, Scott, if you could please call the vote. Cochran. Lee. No. Rice Chopper. No. And Hart. No. Um, that the request is not approved. And that being the last item on today's agenda, we would entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. I second. All in favor, aye. Any opposed? Same sign. We are adjourned. Thank you all.